welcome to the Unblock Your Business podcast. I'm Abby Rogers, success coach, business coach, and hypnotherapist. And I help high achievers and business leaders to take control of their minds, to achieve incredible success, smash those income goals, and above all, create a life of abundance, well-being, and happiness. Join me as we slay imposter syndrome, level up your mindset, and get you feeling like you can achieve anything you want in your life or business. Because, you know, you really can when you get your mind in the right place. Let's dive in and look at how you can show up bigger, better and more uniquely aligned in life and business today. So welcome back to Unblock Your Business today. We are episode 54 and I wanted to zone in today on one of those areas which has been almost a real surprise in terms of having an effect on my entrepreneurial journey. But something that I now think is so important as part of your big picture and making it all come together, and that is focusing on how you feel physically and creating healthy habits to really support you to be at your best or creating aligned habits that support you in feeling physically at your best. Now, you might think this is completely separate from business and that it wouldn't have anything to do with how successful your business could be. I definitely didn't give it much thought at all at the start. But it's become really, really clear to me that this is something a lot of successful entrepreneurs start to focus on and really start to master at the same time as mastering their habits for business growth. Um, Not only that, but also the way that you feel physically about yourself massively affects your ability to just show up with that all essential self-belief and confidence which is obviously so critical to business isn't it if you think about it you're projecting the way that you feel about yourself into the world all the time subconsciously through things like your language and your gestures um, that nervous laugh that creeps in here and there through the actions you take or you don't take. And if you're constantly putting out this vibe of, I'm not quite where I want to be yet, I'm not quite comfortable with me, I don't feel like the highest version of myself, I don't like myself very much, even if that's just in the background somewhere and you you kind of think that's not an issue at the moment, um, it's not relevant to, say, the presentation you're giving or whatever it might be, it's still there, it's still subconsciously you're projecting that all into the world and if that's the case then it's going to be really hard for other people to feel confident and completely comfortable with you too. Now I personally struggled with feeling uncomfortable about myself for years basically as long as I can remember and that lack of confidence showed up in many areas of my life from the way I ran my business to my relationships to allowing myself to be walked all over financially and being afraid to speak up for myself when it really mattered, just to name a few things where it it really reared its head. And funny enough, two things like overeating and social drinking, so as not to feel rude, not to feel like the odd one out, not to feel like I was saying no to people, um, or not feeling like the exception and sticking out from the crowd and also to kind of give me something to do I think when I felt uncomfortable in social situations it's much easier to reach for another handful at the buffet table isn't it than to make a polite conversation with people you're a bit nervous of. Then I worked with my hypnotherapist and learned to feel a lot better about a lot of those things through just reducing my anxiety and building my confidence and self-worth and eventually i began to realise through studying uh, weight management through mindset management, um, I began to realise how I was using food and drink to bury some of those uncomfortable feelings. But I still had this story in my head, even with all my mindset knowledge and everything. um, At that point, all that great confidence, I still had this story in my head that I was somebody who was just naturally on the larger side, loved my food, but couldn't eat like other people could and get away with it and that I wasn't very good at exercise and I I would never be what you might call athletic. Um, 
And these are all stories that I picked up or come to believe through my childhood and beyond. Um, you know, we've always we've all been that last one to get picked for PE, haven't we? That like nervous, unathletic child feeling left out. So I heard myself developing this narrative of I'm always going to be this way. I love my food, and so I may as well not bother fighting it. You know, I'm happy like this. I'm just going to accept that I'm on the curvy side and forget trying to change that. Now, um, I am all for body acceptance. I think it's so important that we don't discriminate and we don't discriminate against ourselves for the way that we think we should be viewed by society. And I absolutely don't believe in being in a constant battle with your body. I believe it's 100% okay and in fact absolutely healthy and normal to love food and we should all feel like that about food and we shouldn't feel bad about that in any way. Um, and we shouldn't feel like we have to change anything about ourselves to fit in or to be acceptable to other people. You know, if people have a problem with us, then that is their problem, not ours. So I did a lot of work on respecting and appreciating myself and my body as I was and developing the mindset that I am absolutely worthy of love and respect, whatever shape or size or anything else I may be. And I think that is fundamentally the place we should all be aiming to get to because it's just so, so important that we feel that way about ourselves. Um, and like we said, what you feel about yourself, you project into the world and you subconsciously let others know how you feel about yourself through the way that you show up. So we want to be showing up as our best selves. But I also think that we have to recognise when we're allowing ourselves to opt out of looking after ourselves the way that we would really want to or opting out of feeling the way that we really want to feel because maybe it seems too hard or because it feels a bit scary or daunting to go there or because we've always told ourselves we can't so therefore why should we bother um just because you've never been a fit and healthy person it doesn't mean that's impossible for you uh, it just means that you haven't yet found a way to do it in a way that works for you or maybe the version of fit and healthy that you have in your mind is this massive um, bar to, to jump over, this kind of huge obstacle and it feels enormous um, and actually there's a version of fit and healthy that could work absolutely for you and that's I think enough to put a lot of people off ever trying to feel their best because it just feels too much it just feels too difficult and overwhelming and for other people which I also think isn't really true body positivity in a way because we're not giving ourselves a fair chance then to be our best and healthiest if we're getting to a place of acceptance but still feeling there's this underlying I still would like to feel better, then that's it. it's not feeling truly positive, is it? In business, we want to give ourselves a shot at being the best version of ourselves that we possibly can be. So why would we not want that for ourselves physically as well, you know? So I recognised for me that deep down the way I was showing up for myself and my body in terms of the way I was treating myself wasn't the most loving or appreciative it could be even though I'd done all this work on feeling good and comfortable regardless of my size and eating and exercise habits and so on I just wasn't feeling like I was giving myself the the best um I was being positive about the body I had but I was not really showing myself lots of love in terms of looking after myself very well and it honestly um, concerned me because firstly, I'm not getting any younger. I've got two little kids, age three and five. Uh, both my parents had heart issues and that kind of plays on the mind, <laughs> no matter how good you're feeling about your curvy self. Um, and I know that I don't want to suffer with anything that serious or just on a day to day level. I don't want to not be able to keep up with my family. And that really mattered to me. 
I also know that being pretty sedentary and finding exercise harder and harder as time goes on is not a one-way street that I want to get into. Um, as I get older, I want to be mobile. I want to know that I've looked after myself as well as I can and keep going as, as long as I comfortably can without consigning myself to a life of not being able to move about so easily. And I know that being able to exercise and sleep are both huge parts of mental well-being for me and for, for everybody. They are essential ingredients of mental well-being, absolutely. Without exercise, without sleep, we don't regulate our emotions very well at all. So I knew that I wanted to become a generally healthier person to avoid that slippery slope into anxiety um, from not being able to move so well. So I think if you're making any kind of major changes in your life, they should always come from a place of expansiveness, an exciting place where you're almost exploring and taking an adventure into something new for yourself and you feel like it's a real step forward. I love challenging myself and I love seeing what's possible. And I guess that is also the same for many of us in business. So there was a little bit of an added motivation there as well for me. And so the decision to take control of my body and health again, after five years of babies and motherhood and feeding for two <laughs> and building a business around that, it felt like something I was doing for me rather than something I was doing because I thought I should or because I didn't feel socially acceptable or because I thought anyone else would want me to change. And I think that that really is a body positive decision for me. Um, I almost feel like I have to kind of justify this now because so many of the messages around body, blah, around body positivity have become almost critical of anyone who does want to make a positive change for themselves and I, I don't think that should be the narrative. I think we should be happy for people who want to stay as they are and for people who want to change as long as it's for them um, and shame is not something that anybody should ever feel about their decisions around what they choose to do or not do with their body. So let's be truly body positive and support people who want to change and people who are embracing their beautiful selves as they are. As long as it is a change for you, it's all good with me. So I reached a place like I have in business many times where I just decided to stop making excuses to myself, stop holding myself back and pretending I can't change things and to get out of my own way. Now I've just turned 42 and I'm probably fitter now than I've ever been which is feeling really good. I am uh, still by no means an Olympic athlete but I can run a lot better than I used to. I can um, I can even do the old press up now which I've never ever been able to do in my life and that feels so darn good. Um, probably lost about 10 pounds this year so far, which is not massive, but it's definitely a significant achievement for me because before, when I was in that place of half wanting to change and sort of accepting myself, rather than totally committed, I was just watching the scales creep up and up and kind of wondering why that was happening, even though I was eating pretty healthily to try and look after myself. Now I've since learned a lot about nutrition, portion control and what my body is really trying to tell me about how hungry I am. I am by no means a nutrition expert but I know what um, works for me and what the basic kind of building blocks of a pretty healthy diet are and I'm not relying on willpower um, but I'm using facts and Factoring in the food I love which is so important too. I don't think we should restrict ourselves the things that we enjoy in life basically and food is a huge source of joy for me and it's always been that way and it's always damn well going to stay that way. So I'm just using my own knowledge of mindset along with eating in a way that works for me and my lifestyle and um, I'm fully on board with it because it just feels good and I actually feel far better and far less bloated now than I ever used to um, but I kind of become so used to feeling that way that I hadn't even noticed it was a thing before. So it's really nice to experience what it feels like not to experience bloating anymore. So definite extra win on that one. And the really great thing is that 
this is building my confidence and self-belief in my business even more, not to mention my energy levels. And I think the thing is when you see how you can take down your own barriers and find ways to improve in one area of life, it gives you this great realisation that, wow, hang on, if, if I can do this, then I can do anything. There's nothing that I don't have control over. Nothing set in stone and there's nothing that we have to put up with about ourselves or our circumstances if we want them to change. All we have to do is just find a way that works for us and sometimes that can take a while and it can take a bit of determination and research and it definitely did for me but I'm very glad I persevered with that now. And of course the very act of just paying attention to ourselves and our needs and making sure that we are treating ourselves with love and respect is so powerful in terms of building our own self-worth too. So I really do think that the better we allow ourselves to feel physically and in terms of building our body confidence, the more we will start to see that increased self-worth bringing in more and more success elsewhere in our lives and businesses. So I hope that's been interesting, maybe thought-provoking, um, maybe controversial for some of you. I would love to hear from you if you have an opinion on this. Do email me, have a look at the address in the show notes. Next week I've got a really interesting episode lined up for you, so if this is something you're interested in, my friend Greg, Greg Ferron is a personal trainer and nutritional coach and he's going to be talking with me about some of the ways that we sabotage ourselves and our bodies. He's going to help bust a few myths around weight control and around the menopause and he's going to give us his take on looking after your physical well-being and how that could make a difference to your business and many other areas of life too. So packed full of great tips and also some interesting surprises and revelations too. So keep a lookout for that one next week. Um, see you then and in the meantime have a great week. If you do want to get in touch the show notes can be found at www.unblockyourbusiness forward slash podcast just take a look for the title of this episode, uh, click on there and you'll be able to find my email address and links for how to get in touch and find some wonderful resources too. I will see you next week. Take care. Thanks for listening. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, it would be incredible if you could pop a review on iTunes, Google or your favourite podcast platform. Don't forget to subscribe for more incredible mindset and strategic updates every single week. And I would love you to head over to www.unblockyourbusiness.com where you can pick up free resources for imposter syndrome, money mindset and so much more and join my incredible email community, The A-List. See you there.